Yo, what's going on, everyone? How you guys doing today? Welcome back to Nasty Two video. In today's video, we're back in the Wardlock because today we are playing the game without actually playing the game. And I'll get more into that in a second. But we're essentially playing the build that's all about doing very little while getting a bunch in return. We're basically just gonna be letting a lot of just passive abilities just kill things while at the same time being unkillable and just constantly healing. And you might be thinking, how are we doing that? Well, we're going to be doing that thanks to this weapon right here, the Ergo Sum. We're essentially combining all the great things to help you out on the Warlock and essentially making them do all the heavy lifting while we run around with a sword and hit some things every once in a while. This is essentially the build that you want to have on whenever you want to be very chill but still very effective in name game content like Grandmaster Nifles. So if that's something that interests you, then this is going to be the perfect build for you. And first, let's talk about the main things that you need for this build. Uh, the main two things for the weapon are going to be the Ergo Sum with the Arc Conductor perk. And also the Getaway Artist. As long as you have these two things, you'll be able to make this build and really make the most out of it. So now let's not waste any more time. Let's get into it. And first, let's start with the weapon. Now our main weapon here is going to be the Ergo Sum with the Arc Conductor perk. Just because our conductor is such a great trait, all we gotta do is hit a heavy attack, and then for the next 5 seconds, we're basically gonna shock everything around us, as well as taking less arc damage. Meaning that we're not only gonna be doing some ad clear with those lightning strikes, but we're also gonna be adding some survivability to ourselves. Now, while the weapon itself is gonna work pretty well, uh, just the way it is, without the catalyst, I would highly, highly recommend getting the catalyst done if you have it and if you don't have it i would definitely try to get it because it is a game changer the catalyst gives you ammo back when you do some damage with uh transcendence grenades and that is huge that means that you're never going to be running into any ammo issues you can pretty much just spam heavy attacks as much as you want with the ergo zone and thanks to all the other fragments and how you have a subclass set up you're always going to have your transcendence up you're going to be able to pop it get ammo through doing damage with those grenades you get a crazy amount of ammo from those transcendence grenades i mean just take a look at this look at all the ammo that we're getting on this clip just by throwing one grenade and you gotta remember that as you're getting some kills to extend the transcendence and then you can throw another grenade and some other enemies and get more grenade energy that way because they don't have to be kills they just have to be damaged so i would highly recommend that you guys go get that catalyst done if you haven't done so already uh, not only for this build, but also because it's just a good catalyst. If you're using the Ergo Sun with Prismatic, it is something you definitely want to use. Now for the super, we are going to be on Song of Flame because it's hard not to be on Song of Flame. The ignitions, the damages, you're basically unkillable in it. And it's also just going to be our oh shit button. We're going to get it back really quickly. So, you know, we're going to be popping it whenever we see a lot of enemies, whenever we find ourselves in a bad spot. Since a lot of time we are going to find ourselves in the middle of a lot of enemies, if you think that maybe there's just too many enemies, you could also just pop the super and start just popping the hell off um, and just kill everything, essentially. I found it very useful when there was like multiple champions at once, and basically just get rid of one of them, if not both of them completely. Now for a class ability, I will recommend Phoenix Dive, since we're always going to be in the move, it's just a lot easier to just jump up in the air, come down and do a quick heal, instead of having to put down a rift. And we can also use this a lot more often. For the grenade, we are going to be on the storm grenade. Since our exotic requires for us to be on an arc grenade. And that's really like the only reason why. And for our melee, we're going to have the arcane needle. And this is going to help us in different ways. But the main reason that we have it is so we can get some darkness transcendence energy. We're going to get energy from just using the needle and actually doing damage with it. And also after we kill that target and spawn a tangle. Whenever we destroy that tangle, we'll get some extra transcendence energy thanks to one of our fragments. So this is going to give us back a lot. I really do mean a lot of transcendence energy. And whenever we do pop our transcendence, the arcane needles are something that we can spam just a lot. Now moving on to the aspects, the first one is going to be Feed the Void. And this is basically going to be like the main way that we're going to be staying alive. Whenever we get a kill with an ability, we're going to gain Devour. And every time we get a kill, we gain health and also grenade energy. So this is both going to keep us alive and also let us spam our grenade a lot more often. The main way that we're usually going to activate the power 
is with our Arxel or with our Bleak Watcher. They're always going to be on the field as long as we eat our grenade. And they usually can get a kill pretty quickly. Kick starting Devour. And after that, as long as we keep getting kills, we can just keep extending it. We can also activate it with our Arcane Needle. But most of the time we are not really going to need it. But if for some reason you don't have your grenade and you need to kickstart uh, the bower, you can also do it with that. But that shouldn't really happen too often since we're going to be getting a just ridiculous amount of energy. Our second aspect is going to be the Bleak Watcher. This is going to be great for just controlling ads. We can slow and freeze them with the Bleak Watcher and we can put out multiple of them as long as we have enough grenade energy. And trust me, we will have enough grenade energy. So most of the time you're going to have like two maybe three of these out there just kind of slowing and freezing enemies and overall while everything's slowed and frozen this is going to be much easier to kill so the bleak watcher is going to be fantastic and it also builds up our transcendence meter by just constantly freezing and slowing targets down meaning that we can spam our transcendence even more now for our fragments we're going to be starting off with the facet of protection we're going to be in the middle of the ads very often so it's going to be nice to have a little bit of extra damage resistance when we find ourselves surrounded. This thing is 15% of base, and when we pop our Transcendence, it's 25% damage resistance. So it is quite a bit, especially when Transcendence, and you're definitely going to feel that. You're definitely going to survive a lot more things than you wouldn't otherwise, and the more damage resistance we can stack on top of each other, the better, because they'll just help us stay alive. After that, we're going to have Facet of Devotion. And this essentially is going to give us more light transcendence energy whenever we defeat something that's either affected by stasis or by strand. We're mostly going to be taking advantage of this whenever our Bleak Watcher slows or freezes something. So we're going to be getting just that transcendence energy faster. After that we have Facet of Sacrifice, which is something pretty similar, but instead for darkness energy. Whenever we have an Arc, Soul, or a Void buff, Ability Final Blows will give us darkness transcendence energy. And since we're always going to have a buff, whether it's Devour or Amplified, we're basically always going to be getting that bonus Darkness Transcendence energy, so we can get our Transcendence out faster. Next up, we have Facet of Generosity, and this is basically going to make it so whenever you are in Transcendence, and you get some kills, you have a chance of creating Overs of Power for your allies. And this is pretty much just going to be a support one, this is just to help your allies with those orbs, so they can get your supers back faster, and spam supers. And since we are in Transcendence just so often with this build, we can make uh, quite a lot of orbs with this uh, fragment right here. And lastly, we have Facet of Honor, which is another way that we're going to be getting that Transcendence energy back. Uh, whenever we collect an Elemental Pickup or we destroy a Tango, we're going to get Transcendence energy for the same type. So if we pick up something like an Ionic Trace or a Void Breach, we're going to get Light Transcendence energy. But if we pick up a Strange Shard or shoot a Tango, we're gonna get some darkness transcendence energy. Like I said, it's just another way of getting the transcendence energy so we can spam it even more. And as you see, most of our fragments are actually related to transcendence since we're not really gonna be using our weapons too often besides basically spamming heavy attacks and a couple of light attacks with our Ergosum. It really is just about abilities and getting that transcendence. So that leads us to our exotic piece of armor, which is the Getaway Artist. The Getaway Artist will let us consume our grenade to get an Arc Soul and also become Amplified. The Arc Soul is basically like the perfect thing that we could ask for this build. It is really good at dealing with ads and it lasts for a pretty long time. After we consume our grenade, we're going to get 20 seconds with that Arc Soul. And that's just 20 seconds where it's going to be going around, killing things. And it actually does a surprising amount of damage. It has no problem essentially dealing with ads even at things like Grandmasters. So that's gonna be really good, but that's not even all of it because we're also gonna be getting Amplified every time we consume our grenade. So we're also running Galvanic Armor, which means that whenever we're Amplified, we take less incoming damage from combatants. And it's a big 30% damage resistance, so it's definitely gonna add to our survivability. And just considering how often we can keep this uh, Amplified up and how the Arc Buddy getting kills can extend it, uh, we're basically always just gonna be amplified. We're gonna be amplified. We're gonna have the devourer uh, Staying alive is gonna be something that we're gonna be able to do Very easily. So you essentially never actually want to use your grenade. You always want to consume it So you can keep your arc buddy up 
and so you can just keep tossing out those uh, Bleak Watchers. Now the gameplay loop for this is pretty simple, and you can also modify it if you want to do some things before or after. But you essentially consume your grenade, get that stasis turret out there, and then do a heavy attack with the Ergo Sum. The heavy attack doesn't really have to be against an enemy, you can just do it behind cover. You just gotta make sure that you actually have full energy before you do the heavy attack. Since you'll only get the Arc Conductor perk if you do your heavy attack where you have full energy. If you do it before, it will do the heavy attack, but it won't give you the Arc Conductor. And that's pretty much it. Once you get that Devourer going, you're free to just kind of run in there. You could also just Phoenix Dive in if you want to make sure that you get there with your full health. After that, you can just swing your sword around. Whenever you see that you're back to full energy, you want to consume your grenade again. Throw out another Bleak Watcher, reset the timer on your Arc Buddy. That's pretty much all you want to do. And once you get your Transcendence up, you can pop it and start spamming your abilities around. As long as you do some damage with your grenades, you're going to be able to get back some of that Ergosome ammo. If you get enough grenades out there with your Transcendence, you can pretty much go from like having little ammo to your ammo being maxed out on the Ergosome. It is very crazy. Just make sure that you are actually hitting targets with the grenade. Uh, some of the bigger targets are definitely great. For the grenades since they're going to be hitting hit multiple times so things like majors champions mini bosses all of those are going to be really good targets for your transcendence grenade if you're trying to get the most damage you can possible and that's pretty much it after your transcendence runs out you just restart the process regain your arc buddy put down the bleak watcher and start spamming some heavy attacks on your ergosome again just make sure that you always keep that arc conductor going it only lasts five seconds before you have to like Hit another heavy attack to keep it going but since we have so much ammo just don't hold back on it just keep spamming those heavy attacks as soon as you see that uh your arc conductor is down by the time you're running out of ammo you'll have your transcendence back again and can get some of that sweet ammo back so go for it so now here at the very end we're gonna take a quick look at the mods that we're running and also at the artifact perks so first of all here we have special ammo finder to get more special our arc siphon so we can make some orbs with our arc kills and that's pretty much it now for the gauntlets here we have fastball for our transcendence grenades so we can throw them farther and then we have focusing strike and heavy handed so we can make some orbs and also gain a bit of ability energy whenever we hit something with our charge melees especially since we have three so we really get a lot out of focusing strike now for the chest piece we have charged up so we can carry more armor charge and also solar resistances but you can change this depending on the threat on the activity you have. After that, for the boots, we have Orbs of Restoration, so we can get some more uh, ability for our uncharged abilities whenever we pick up Orbs Power. And then we have Arc Weapon Search and Arc Scavenger, used so we can grab more ammo and so our Arc Weapons can do more damage. And lastly, for the class item, we have Reaper as well as Time Dilation. This will make our Arm Charge last longer. And Reaper is just another way that we can make some more orbs, especially since activating our class ability. Uh, it's going to be pretty easy and pretty fast. You want to activate it every once in a while to really take advantage of Reaper and just make even more orbs. Now for the artifact, we have a couple of different uh, sword perks. We have Argent Blade that makes our weapon just do more damage. Uh, that's pretty good when we're going against some of the bigger targets where the Arc Buddy and some of the other things that kill adds pretty quickly won't be able to deal with them. Uh, this gives us a bit of extra damage so we can kill them faster. Uh, we also have Overload Sword in case you rent some overloads. And also Blade Stamina. This is really nice since we get some ammo refunded uh, when we're killing combatants. Uh, Radiant Orbs is pretty good. It's always usually pretty good. And then you definitely want Galvanic Armor for that damage assistance since we're going to be amplified for so long. And then the last one I would say is required is this one. Uh, Transference. Which is going to give us increased grenade and melee damage while we're transcendent. And if we get some weapon kills while we're transcendent, uh, it will refund a little bit of light and darkness energy after it ends. It basically just helps us spam transcendence even more. But yeah, these are pretty much the artifacts we're going to go for. Those are the ones that are going to help this build out. And with that, that's actually everything. Now you know the whole build. And like always, in the comments below, there will be a dim link. If you guys want to try this build out, it is really fun. <laughs> it's really fun. You just walk around with a sword. Things are dying all around you. You're getting a bunch of energy. You're spamming a bunch of abilities. 
it is fantastic and I'm so happy that it works in like in-game content because that pretty much means that it's gonna work everywhere else no matter the activity you throw at this build it'll be able to deal with it but hopefully you guys enjoyed the video hopefully you guys enjoyed the build if you guys actually end up giving it a try make sure you come back here and just tell me what you thought about it or if you made any changes like always thank you all for stopping by and I'll see you guys in the next video have a good rest of your day peace